Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks, and specifically, welcome back to my Masterclass series where I go above and beyond my regular tank review to try and help you get things like marks of excellence or more ace tankers on your vehicle, or alternatively, just see what build worked for me to have more fun in a specific tank than I ever have had before. Today I'm going to be looking at the most popular tier 10 medium tank in the game. It is the Leopard 1. This is a fast, furious German medium tank that in the right scenario, there's nothing else that feels like it for getting forwards and dominating the battle. So just how dominant is the Leopard 1? Well, its win ratio is right in the middle of the pack at 49%. However, its damage is in the top three. And this is because this is a glass cannon tank that likes to deal its damage safely from the mid to long range. You don't have to play the vehicle like that, but that is why its win ratio is completely average, even though it's doing one of the highest damages of any of the tech tree mediums. The real highlights of this tank are incredible damage per minute, a decent amount of alpha, great penetration on both of its rounds, with amazing shell velocity of 1,600 on its premium rounds, combined with great gun handling, fantastic mobility, and enough view range so you never have to take coated optics on this tank, which frees up an equipment slot for something else. The real problem with this vehicle is its armor is pretty much non-existent outside of a, a lot of luck when you're using its gun depression with the turret. And this combined with a very large and easy to hit frame means that you've got to really be sneaky or just outgun your opponent if you want to actually do anything in the battle. The only true high pressure crew member that the Leopard 1 has is the commander, as not only do they do the, the commanding of the tank, they are also the radio operator. And so if you're going to invest one special crew member with brothers in arms, make it the commander on this tank. However, as all experienced Leopard 1 drivers will know, the loader is also very important on this tank. Not only to get the irreplaceable safe stowage, as this thing uh, gets amaracked a lot inside World of Tanks, but also as the Leopard has such magnificent high explosive penetration with 105 millimeters average, you definitely want to have intuition on your loader so you can take advantage of the three different varieties of shells on this tank. Equipment wise, I have one main build for my Leopard, which is going to use vents inside the mobility slot, an exhaust inside the spotting slot and a gun rammer. By using an exhaust on the Leopard 1, you can get 35% camera rating without using any directives or fancy bounty equipment. This consequently means that you can make passing plays to be able to get into the forward aggressive positions, sometimes without being spotted. And also, your goal with the Leopard 1 is to be able to hide the fact that you have awful armor in a big frame, and so you must outspot your opponents at decent distances to create these zones where you can spot your opponents but they can't see you, which allows you to fire at them without the threat of taking damage. And creating this dead zone for your opponents is my number one biggest tip for the Leopard, and why you should do everything that you can, at least in my opinion, to be able to make that zone bigger. My second build for the Leopard 1 is I'm going to be dropping the gun rammer on this tank and instead using a vision system. This is for when you get on maps like Muravanka, Malinovka, Prokhorovka, where it's not going to be so important to be firing rapidly and dumping out a large amount of damage per minute, but it's more important to actually be able to see your opponents in those bushes or even when they're moving to get the jump on them. And on those kind of maps, losing that 0.8 seconds on the reload from dropping the gun rammer, I think is far outweighed by actually being able to see your opponents to deliver the shells to them. If you're rich with credits, I would also recommend that you use the designated target directive. Be warned, this will cost you 20,000 credits per battle or 18,000 if you're buying them in bulk and getting the 10% discount. But when you combine this with having designated target on your gunner already, this means that with vents and the premium consumable adding some duration, you're going to be spotting your opponents for 15.32 seconds, allowing your allies to get more shots in or alternatively baiting your opponents into making a mistake of thinking they're no longer spotted, coming back up into that bush and you can deliver a shell. Field mods wise, you certainly want to take the module durability increase on the Leopard because this thing gets amaranked all the time. Next, you want to take improved sight to improve the accuracy of the vehicle. After that, I would thoroughly recommend to improve the concealment of this vehicle as it does have decent reverse speed even after taking it. The only real hard decision you have on the Leopard is the penultimate field mod. Do you want to try and increase the rate of fire of the vehicle by 3% to sacrifice 5% accuracy or should you not take that field mod? That is going to be personal preference. Personally for me, 
I take the field mod because I want to increase the damage per minute on the vehicle and even while sacrificing 5% accuracy, I can still get 0.26 accuracy base, which I already feel is more than enough. But if you try this field mod and find your leopard missing too much for your liking, then don't take this field mod but I wouldn't recommend going the other way. Or you could end up lowering your damage per minute to the point where you're no longer that raw firepower beast. For the final field mod, I'd thoroughly recommend taking the engine power to make this thing more mobile, as it already has fantastic aim time and gun handling. You don't really need to worry about it. Okay, so the first game we're going to be looking at here is going to be the classic Leopard 1 battle. We're playing on Glacier, and this is actually old Glacier right now, uh, before they managed to add a lot of the cover for the enemy team, which was a great change for this map. Because previously, as you can see, medium tanks would just rush towards the center and it would be absolutely farm town here on the enemy tanks. And what better tank to go farm town on here than a leopard? You can see you're just easily able to hit all of your shots. Other medium tanks will be missing a few of these shells. And you just feel so confident in the leopard that you're going to be hitting all of your shots against your opponents. And when you Factor that in with the field mod that increases the rate of fire of this vehicle, a gun rammer and vents as well. You have all of the firepower that you need to really rip apart the enemy tanks. And this poor teenage VZ-51, oh, he's lucky that I actually low rolled in that situation. This 420 alpha damage should have dealt the, uh, the final blow to that tier 9 Czechoslovakian heavy. So you can still go into the middle to try and find a shot or two, even in the, the current version of Glacier. However, uh, I think that trying to get up on the hill almost in a leopard, if you can manage to do so, is fantastic. I wouldn't recommend to do it immediately in the battle, but again, this is just an example of the leopard's engine power. The field mod, the final field mod that increases your engine power by 5%, it's kind of like having half a turbo on this tank. And just look at that gun handling on the move even, the leopard just an absolute beast. The char turns round to shoot me, but now with the exhaust on this tank, I don't think they're going to be able to see me at a decent distance, but I'm probably going to be able to see them, and then hopefully that allows us to be able to deliver the shot right into the back of the, the French medium, as well as also keeping them lit up for my team. One word of advice on this tank is it does end up getting Amorak so much that if you do have a lot of credits, you might want to invest into a large repair kit on this vehicle. However, on my free-to-play account, I still do pretty darn well in the Leopard. Not amazingly, but good enough to have got my second mark and still a half-decent win rate on the Leopard, at least as far as I remember, with only using the standard equipment. But this is definitely a tank that, if you can manage to afford the large repair kit and the chocolate, yeah, this, this one is a truly special vehicle. That poor T-103 just unable to spot us, even while we were firing at them there. And that is just an example of the camo rating that we have, even after firing. The exhaust will add a little bit of camo, it's not going to be the be-all end-all. But you are a fairly sneaky German tank. It's not like you're playing an E50M with this vehicle. It's definitely not like a, a K91. The K91 takes the whole camo and sniping vibe to a whole new level. And I think that I'd be doing all of you a disservice if I didn't talk about the K91, even though I wasn't going to give you a direct comparison. So I felt that there was just nothing more that was going to happen on top of the hill. And considering that we were down by 3,000 hit points, I felt like my need, my team needed a little bit of help. Luckily for me, this Franvang is focused on the vehicles in front. And so I'm going to just nail them in the side. And I'm hoping they're not going to be able to get us now. And there we go. Look at that damage per minute. One of the, the reasons why you should consider taking that 3% rate of fire increase. And why I like to use vents on this vehicle as well as the, uh, the gun rammer to just maximize this damage per minute performance. Again, it doesn't look like this T124 can see me here. Or maybe he can, he just couldn't be able to depress the gun. And within the first few minutes of this battle, you'll notice that actually you can't see the timer at the top. Because this is a, an older replay and um, unfortunately I had to... Uh, jankily download a Russian client and then convert it into English to be able to get it to work. In the first few minutes of the battle, a bit of a, a mystery battle here, we've already done 7,000 combined. Now I don't want to fly too close to my opponents and get spotted by the Lorraine, so I am going to go the uh, longer way around here. And a good thing too, as it looks like I get lit up maybe by the ELC Eva 90 or possibly the uh, Lorraine. So even with the improved camera rating on this vehicle, you still got to be a little bit careful and, and don't be too cheeky. And I think when it comes down to Leopard gameplay, and then we can see who was able to see us, it was the char in that situation. However, 
they didn't actually manage to get the jump on us there. Maybe they were fired, or maybe they just moved to be able to get into the position. Their camera rating not quite so good from that angle. And again, the more that you can try and create those zones where you can spot your opponents and they can't manage to see you, that is really where the leopard loves to be on the fringes. And I would thoroughly recommend to all of you out there to to really use the rings on the minimap with this tank. There is no more important vehicle, I'd say, than good knowledge of the, the rings of the minimap to try and put yourself in a position where you can see your opponents and they can't manage to catch a glimpse on you. And if you can do that enough, then the leopard just absolutely farms. And by doing that, you're also not risking your hit points. Considering you don't have the largest amount of hit points and you've got absolutely no armor to be able to protect you, that's really what's going to make a great leopard player. I'm not saying I'm a, I'm a great leopard player. I can play the leopard okay. I wouldn't call myself an incredible, like, the best leopard player. But at least I'll show you a few games today of where I, at least I look like I, I, I play occasionally okay in this tank. Being able to... Um, just find those areas where you're able to shoot your opponents, they're not able to see you. And we're going to pull a little bit behind this tree now to be able to just dump rounds into this Udez. And you can see that it's not only the damage that we're dealing right now, as now we're going to absolute farm town here on our opponents. It's also the spotting that we're, we're lighting up for our team as well. And unfortunately, you know, sitting in base, even though they are tier 8, and you can't really blame them when they get into a horrible tier 10 matchup, it's not really working out for them right now. I'm firing gold there through the side of the Amex M449. I probably could have hit them with a regular round, but I was worried that I would be uh, engaging the, the front of their armor. And the gold, you know it helps on this vehicle. The 278 going up to the uh, 323. It's not the biggest increase in World of Tanks. A lot of mediums have got a lot less penetration than the Leopard on their standard rounds. And so for all of you free-to-play players out there, Having got the Leopard on, on both of my accounts, I can tell you that the Leopard is actually pretty good free to play. And while that's not necessarily what the Masterclass is about, the Masterclass is more about kind of like min-maxing and taking the vehicle to, uh, to an extreme or a method of how I manage to, uh, to push the vehicle to the next level, I, I feel like I would again be de doing you guys a disservice if I didn't highlight that this vehicle is actually really good from a free to play standpoint as well. Okay, so in this kind of a situation, I'd love to possibly catch the Lorraine here. But oh dear, the 7772 lurches over the ridge. Luckily for me, they hit our gun with their heat round, which means they're not able to get us. I'm going to put a round through the back there and ask for help from the Lorraine and then use my mobility to now go hold down on the 7772 and hope this Lorraine is going to miss a shot and not be able to finish me off as we are now down to a very low amount of hit points. I should have used my repair kit here, but I think I'm trying to be cheap. I don't think I've repaired so far. And you hear the intuition switch there, which is going to allow me to guarantee a kill, hopefully on the top of the frame. And there you have it. That is 8,800 damage and 3,800 assistance. Nailing 12k combined in just over 8 minutes. While also still gaining 58,000, that is the leopard dream. With 1,549 base, poof! good one to start the video off with today. So that was just an absolute farm of a game. Now we're going to be presented with a little bit more of a tricky situation. We're assaulting on Corellia and immediately I'm trying to figure out what uh, what equipment setup I want to take on this tank. If I take a vision system it's going to help me to be able to spot as I manage to get across. However it's not really going to to help me once I get into position all that much as there's not many bushes that my opponents could be hiding in. However I really feel that in this map and this scenario, this is where an exhaust is just absolutely irreplaceable. So I'm going to be going with my Vents Gun Rammer exhaust build here, and I have one goal, and that is to race across to get to the D4 area. Unfortunately for me, the Leopard on the enemy team spots me. However, by having that extra can like 6 to 8% concealment, depending on whether you're using Bounty or a regular piece of equipment, maybe those 50 meters that I managed to get closer towards my opponents are the 50 meters that I don't get hit by one of the tank destroyers on the enemy team and keeps a lot of my hit points. And now it's hopefully using my superior rate of fire against the Leopard while also now being safe in these bushes that I can hopefully just reset the vision here and then come around the corner, go into the bushes, and then hopefully we're going to be able to fire through here. 
and then be able to see that he's looking behind me. He might not even see me in that scenario. And while he didn't, unfortunately, the M48 did. And this is where I just got to pray that my team are going to help me in this situation. I probably should have gone for the tracks on the M48, but oh wow, actually a gun line that helped me out. Beautiful. And this is just one of those fun things about playing the Leopard is kind of getting forwards and not only being a real big damage dealing light tank, but also having that vision as well to go with it. And that is why what I love playing the Leopard. At the front, being aggressive against my opponents, getting those spots in. And you know what? Early on in the battle, once again, we are already up to kind of like 5,000 combined. And this silly manticore just sitting above just gets shut down super hard there by the Amex 50B. Although it is a, a tricky map to be able to defend on Corellit for a light tank. What can you do? Go in towards the middle, try and sit in one of the bushes, possibly. Uh, you, you, but he, him sitting there definitely wasn't going to be the play to be able to win this one, even though he seems to have found himself a little bush. I think he was in a bit of a rock and a hard place situation there. But undoubtedly, pushing aggressively to take this D4 area on Corelli Assault is the number one way for you to be able to revolutionize your games. Now, look, sometimes it's not going to work. If anyone uh, watched my Tech Tree Showcase last weekend, you'll know that uh, I got Amaract trying to make this aggressive play in a level prototype. I crossed and I got one shot. Well, yeah, pretty much one shot. I think it was the second hit that I took. The first shell uh, damaging my ammo rack and the second shell just blowing my vehicle up completely. But I feel like it's about risk reward analysis and you trying to figure out what positions work for you in your playstyle in the Leopard and whether they give you a good win ratio or they give you good average combines or they give you a bad win ratio and bad average combines. Hopefully you can then figure out which positions work and which ones don't and which ones you should try and not use um, persistently. Uh, you, and, and it's definitely important that you try and figure that out and you're not too persistent in trying to make positions work because quite often you can, when you've got such a fast vehicle and a glass cannon, you can be too reckless and too aggressive. And so it's, it's a tricky one with the Leopard. Some people and their playstyle will do better with the Leopard just hanging around on the fringes and being that kind of like mid-support vehicle. Sure. But I do think that if you want to be able to try and push your Leopard win rate higher, that it's not going to be enough to just sit on the fringes. Also, taking it upon yourself to take the more aggressive positions is going to be important. And the Leopard, you know, since Wargaming buffed it, it's not like just a big old sack of hit points for your opponents to be able to feast on now once you, once you, if you do get caught in that position. Now the Leopard really does have some teeth as well with that higher alpha damage and the great damage per minute. And it's amazing a tank like this, because unlike other tanks, like the Amex 50B, for example, if you, uh, sack, wow, look at those blind fires there, possibly, hopefully going in against the Cranbog in the 705A. So unlike the Amex 30B, where you have the opportunity to make the accuracy 5% worse to improve the rate of fire by 3%, when you do that on that tank, you really do suck at mid to long ranges. However, on the Leopard, it has so much base accuracy that it kind of then just gets a free 3% rate of fire. Now, it is going to affect your accuracy by 5%, but I do feel like it's a lot less punishing on a tank like this than it would be to take it on a vehicle that doesn't have the fantastic base accuracy as well. And another reason uh, for the Leopard 1 to just be awesome in these kind of scenarios is because once you've got this 410 meters base view range, not even free-to-play players need to take coated optics. You don't even need a premium consumable. As long as you take your vents, you've got recon, situational awareness, brothers in arms, you will have enough view range so that there's not really much point of taking coated optics. And I think the majority of the time, you'll do better taking an exhaust to be sneaky and then also then having the, uh, the drop of the gun rammer on maps where you think it's going to be seriously vision-based, you know, when you get on your Malinovkas or Prokhorovkas. And so, just like that, we are up to, gosh, nearly 9,000 combined once again in the Leopard. And once you get into these beautiful scenarios where you've just got the gun handling to outshoot your opponents, pull back before they dump on you, and then pretend like you're not interested, you know, fall back to a position where this Fosh B is now going to shoot someone else and then clutch shot right through the side. 
And unfortunately, while it wasn't quite enough to be able to save the T124, at least it secures me my second kill of the game. Okay, so in this situation, I've still got to be really careful. Unfortunately, these two are kind of like spotting me before I can get the 705A into a point where I can uh, spot them. We're going to use intuition to switch out to gold here. And I'm happy I did so, because I think that my regular rounds would have probably bounced on this tank's upper plate. But as we can see, the gold rounds are just going straight through it from this kind of an angle where they're slanting their upper plate slightly down the slope. And just look at this accuracy. Look at this rate of fire. Unfortunately, also look at what happens whenever you take a hit. <laughs> There's a reason why we've blocked zero damage in this weapon. And again, that is why you've got to try and create these dead zones of vision against your opponents. And your ability to create these dead zones of vision will 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 mean whether you're a good leopard player who's getting a lot of damage in, or whether you're you're not. It's as simple as that. Okay, so in this situation, we've got a Progetto approaching from the south, also an AMX 50B, so there's not too much pressure on us. I'm hoping that we're going to be able to finish off this SDB-1 over the rock, be able to get one right into the back of that tank. Kind of wish I'd switched out to a regular APCR round there rather than a premium APCR round, but whatever. Uh, maybe I would have missed the opportunity to actually secure the kill on the SDB-1. And I'm being very patient right now. I'm pinging the map, letting my team know that there's a, a near full health 121B that I can't really advance around this corner is there. I'm, I'm pretty much about a 70% chance to die to a 1 to 1B if they're able to hit me. But I'm just so greedy, obviously, looking at this scenario. I see all my team rushing in, and I want to make the play too. And who's to say that that exhaust didn't stop me from getting spotted by the 1 to 1B? We're going to put one round into their side. They're going to spot us here. I'm definitely not going to side scrape out, but I see the 1 to 1B just decides to fire through the rock. Bit of a misplay there by him. And now let's go to town on the side of this tank. Now up to nearly 7,000 damage while also getting 5,000 assistance. Hopefully showing you in these last two games that if you're able to take forward aggressive positions, unlike a light tank that doesn't really have the firepower to do crazy things when they get there, the Leopard does. And so the Leopard, it, it kind of almost becomes one of the better light tanks in the game from that perspective. With the field mods, not only do you have the outrageous uh, potential for the damage, but with an exhaust, you are kind of the same as other tier 10 light tanks who aren't using exhausts. And when those two aspects of the tank are combined, well, you're, you're seeing that you can get some pretty nutty results. With nearly 1,200 combined in this eight minute round with a very decent profit achieved once again. Okay, so now we're going to be jumping into a game which I I featured during my Tech Tree Showcase last weekend. And unfortunately, Wargaming have changed the, the positions of the equipment. So I'm going to have to jump over here to show you that I'm going to be using vents, a vision system and an exhaust because, come on, this is proper rock. It's the uh, best map arguably for using a vision system as there are bushes absolutely everywhere. So on this map, I could go and try and hunt the, the middle and try and just extend some vision for my team there. There's only one light tank either side. It's a 3090 on my team versus an RU251 on the enemy team. However, when I'm playing a, a larger medium tank such as this, the Leopard, I don't really feel too safe going and sneaking through the bushes early on in the game. Maybe later, when the, the fighting has devolved a little bit, it will be a possibility. But early on in the battle, I do prefer to go and work the hill when I spawn on the northern team. Especially on an encounter, where more people are more likely to go up on the hill and try and fight for the camp circle. And this is where this exhaust and vision system build is going to maybe not pay off immediately, but definitely later on. But also, look, I spot that CS-63, they don't see me. And they're only like a uh, hundred meters away. I can fire, I can fall back. Fortunately, I'm going to get spotted when I fire, but now it's just waiting, counting down the time, waiting for about 14 seconds roughly for where most people will no longer be able to see you, and then going back up and trying to hunt the E50. The vision system will definitely later on in this game pay off. But one thing I'd like to highlight, this is very important here, is that if you're spotted for like 10 seconds to 15 seconds in World of Tanks, depending on whether they're using a designated target and directive, you have to hide for 10 to 15 seconds after a shot. So when you get onto maps like this, where you, you pretty much do get spotted every time that you fire, it's dubious as to whether you really need to improve your rate of fire that much, because quite often you have to pull back. And if you are getting spotted each time, you don't get to use the tank's crazy rate of fire. 
Although, you see in this kind of a situation as well that I pull back, realize I'm not spotted, spotted, even go back up into the bush. But even then, without the gun rammer, I'm not really quite ready because you should be pulling back for three seconds until you know your six sense has not gone up. And then it's going to take you three seconds to get back into the bush and then maybe a second or so to aim. And considering that my leopard has about a 7.8 second reload without the gun rammer, it's kind of like the Manticore paradox, in a way. Why does the Manticore do so well, even though it's got terrible, um, a terrible rate of fire? Uh, well, obviously with that tank, it's because of the camera rating, because it can get forwards and be really sneaky. But quite often with the Manticore, and see if you notice yourself doing this as well. Because the Manticore's rate of fire is so long, you naturally fall back, hide, you're always going to re-stealth, and then you go back uh, into a bush and then even fire again to be able to get spotted. That kind of natural window of having to hide for 10 seconds in World of Tanks after you've been spotted or even in case you've been spotted with the three second pullback for sixth sense means that tanks with higher alpha damage do do better. And it's why the Manticore does do well. That 390 alpha is pretty good for a, a top tier light tank. Uh, it's way better than the T100 LT, for example. And so it means that even though the vehicle does have that horrendous damage per minute and that horrendous rate of fire, it doesn't really hold it back too much because other tanks like the Sheridan with the 105mm that have great rates of fire can't really use it because they have to fall back anyway and hide in between their shells. And so for me, and one of the best things that i found on quite a few of my, my medium tanks especially in the vehicles that do end up just going up into bushes firing and then pulling back and hiding is that sometimes the gun rammer especially on a map like this is just not really as advantageous as being able to actually spot your opponents to be able to deliver the shells or in this case also using the exhaust to be able to make push plays get forward stay hidden and not get lit up maybe if i didn't have the exhaust that e50 could have caught me uh, with some vision through the gap However, I will say that when you're about to go into a situation like this, where you want to crest the ridge, yeah, this is where you want a gun round, right? Now it's a case of trying to kill these players as quickly as I possibly can before they're able to deal with me. Now, luckily, I'm on full hit points, so it's not too much of a concern against the Progetto here. What I want to show you now is that in the previous games, you saw that it was really wild right from the beginning. However, what I want to show you in this game is that this game hasn't been too outrageous, right? We're sitting at 3,500 combined, nearly five minutes into the battle. In all of the previous games, we were up to kind of like 8,000 combined by this point, right? This has been fairly mediocre from that perspective. But look at what we're going to achieve in the next few seconds. We don't get spotted by the Yang Panzer E100, even though they were like 300 meters away. I'd say that's because of the exhaust. And now we're able to catch the C50M, but I don't think it's me spotting him. I think it's going to be the Chieftain prototype. But let's see what we can do from our 3,500 combined and how extreme we can manage to, to push that up in the next few minutes of this battle. All right, so I'm not catching the E50M. The 260 manages to finish them off. I'm thinking about getting the T30, but now that I know that that Jagdpanzer didn't spot me, even though they're only 350 meters away from me, because I've got like 36% camo. So of course, uh, even if your opponents have like 500 meters view range, because I got like 36% camo while I'm moving, I'm going to have to go within kind of like about 350 meters to, for them to be able to see me. But because I still have the 460, 470 meters view range, and in this case, I also have the vision system, which means that when they move, I'm definitely going to be seeing them at 445 meters. And so that is my window. I've got like this 100 meter window between four, like 445, the max spotting distance, and 350 where they're actually going to see me that I can play around. And talk about playing around. Look at this. Look at this spotting at the end of the game. 1,266 against the char. We're also going to light up the strv 103B towards our right, get 800 assistance against them, 1,359 assistance. Catch the WTR Panzer IV as well. And we're going to get all of the assistance there as well. And yeah, we just changed a 3,500 game at what was it, 10 minutes? To actually ending up being a 10,000 combined game with six and a half minutes into the battle. And that is just the exhaust and the vision system difference on this tank. With one of the most nonchalant ace tankers from last weekend, where I did 
get a few of them. And the results, at least for me, speak for themselves. Over the last 120 days, I have a 75% win ratio in the Leopard in the 24 games that I've played. And last weekend, I managed to win 10 out of 11 battles, of which 10 were in a row. And while my WN8 is not really that impressive at 3,400 in this tank, that's because it's not factoring in the amount of spotting that I achieve, which has gone dramatically up since I focused on the exhaust and the vision system on this tank, which has been significantly increasing my win ratio in this vehicle. And there's no doubt that I've been having way more fun since I've given this leopard this purpose on the battlefield. Just sitting there idly and waiting for your team to spot for you and get shots doesn't really do this tank justice. And so give it a go. Try setting up the leopard as I've suggested. Think about creating that, that dead zone of vision with your opponents and see if you can make this thing roar. So all in all, the Leopard 1, do I think it's the best tier 10 medium tank that you should grind to be able to get right now? Eh, probably not. But in those kind of situations where you need something that's accurate, fast, and just feels super dependable, as well as now having a really good gun at long ranges, there's very little other choice for you in World of Tanks. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. Really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know what you think about the Leopard 1 in the comments down below. Do you think it's just too big and weak to be an enjoyable tank? Or is this thing one of your favorites? If it is, let me know why. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.